Sonalint for VS Code supports quick fixes, which help make keeping your code clean effortless. But what is a quick fix? We'll take this example of a simple type def. If we hover over the highlight, we see that the Sonalint recommendation is that using should be preferred. So it's a nice modernizing rule. But do we really want to go through all of our code changing these perfectly working type defs? Well, maybe. But now, immediately below the rule summary, we'll see this quick fix action. And clicking on that, we'll rewrite the code for us. Let's look at another one. We can also get to the quick fix action with command dot on my Mac here, or control dot on Windows and Linux. So we don't even need to leave the keyboard. Now in those cases, the type defs were readable enough and the transformations fairly straightforward. But the trouble with type defs is they get harder to read the more levels of indirection you add. So following a type def like this one, it's a tricky and error prone process for most of us. So being able to quick fix it into a using declaration automatically is a big relief. Now the using keyword itself started out as a way to deal with namespaces, but namespaces themselves have evolved a lot since then as well. In C++17, we got nested namespace definitions, so we can clean up heavily nested code easily. But then in C++20, we got inline namespaces, which make all their declarations visible in the enclosing namespace as well. And Sonalint for VS Code can also compact this, which is just as well because the syntax can look a bit odd if you're not used to it. Now we've had move semantics since C++11, but it can still be tricky to keep track of what you can move and how. Here we can see that this std move is highlighted because it's being passed as a const ref argument, so it's not an R value. We can quick fix to remove that. Similarly with this one, the type itself has no move constructor, so the call to std move does nothing. We should just remove it. Or this one that's const, so again, not movable. Now, if you're working with code from before C++11, you might have a lot of tediously spelled out types, especially iterators. Very often, these are not adding any information as we know what to expect from a call like cbegin here. So it's nice to be able to convert that to auto in one click. But notice that this one is left unhighlighted. And that's because we're assigning the return of plain begin to a const iterator. So there's a type conversion there. And so changing this to auto would actually change the behavior. That may be fine, but of course, if we'd started with a plain iterator, we would have been offered the same conversion. Now, perhaps you've been using auto with begin and end without thinking about their constness. Maybe it's time to revisit that habit. And the final example that we'll look at involves exception hierarchies. We can catch exceptions by their dynamic type, of course. But if multiple catch blocks could catch the same object, then only the first match is selected. So if, as we have here, a base class is mentioned before a derived class, then the derived branch will never be matched at all, which Sonalint will warn us about. But Sonalint also offers not just one, but three quick fixes here, as there's actually a few reasonable ways to address it. We could move the base after the derived, or the derived back before the base, both of which will actually change the behavior. Or you could just remove the derived catch block completely which technically preserves the behavior that you had before, but it's probably one of the first ones that you wanted. And that's it. That's been a sampling of some of the many quick fixes that we've added to Sonalint and available here in the plugin for VS Code. It takes seconds to install the plugin for the marketplace. Just search for Sonar. So why not try it today?